for those of you who don't know, Phil is, uh, he's one of the biggest winners ever in poker. He's got 16 World, uh, World Series of Poker bracelets. His winnings exceed 29 million, his recorded winnings. He's undoubtedly won many more. Uh, and he's 19th on the all-time money list. Thank you, Phil, for being on the show. Yeah, I mean, I think the, I think the all-time money list is a bit of a crock, actually, between you and I. I mean, you have these guys traveling all over the world, 20 or 30 of them playing 100K, 200K, 500K, million-dollar buy-ins, you know. And how many of those guys are way, way ahead? You know, if you took the 20 or 30 and you average them over the last five years, no one's way ahead, but their numbers have all jacked way up. You know, I, I was leading the all-time money list for a while, and I thought I deserved to be there. Mm -hmm. But I mean, like, the, the, I don't think it means what it used to mean. I think you're, I think you're right, especially with, yeah, especially with uh, these big buy-in tournaments and everyone's obsession with bigger and bigger and bigger. It's it for sure doesn't represent what who's actually made the most money by any stretch anymore. It's not really feasible for only any, for yeah like, you know usa today did this article on roi like in 2012 believe it or not mm -hmm. and you know they had this chart right and i was a little speck at the top you talk about an outlier i was so far up there that it was just one little speck and that you know return on investment because you know i made whatever 12 million dollars or whatever it was my first 12 million playing in like 10k max buy-ins but mostly 5ks and 1ks so so the ROI, you know, which I think is more important, but whatever, you know, uh, let's let's move on. That's just my own ego talking. You know, I had an amazing World Series, and so it was pretty cool. Seven final tables. No one had ever done that before. Uh, a bracelet, and then, you know, and then two seconds. Now, the seconds I still think about every day. One time I got a little tired, and then the other, the other was after Daniel and I and Jeremy Osmus played for – three hours of heads of a three-handed the heads up match lasted one hand <laughs> so you know so i keep thinking back could i have done something different you know i had ship leads in both of those and you think wow i could easily have had three bracelets or with seven final tables i could have had seven bracelets it's kind of unheard of so for me it was kind of <clears throat> you know there's too many people out there in poker you know, too many of like the world knows the world thinks I'm the greatest poker player in the world. And even all the young guys will say I'm the greatest of all time. Fine. Greatest of all time, whatever. But what I really wanted to be was the greatest today. And then, you know, to show up with seven final tables, you know, at least I'm in that conversation. People are saying, wow, that was pretty, you know, and if you look at, you know, you look at all the measures, you know, Daniel LeGrand used 25 K buy-in where they started like 10 years ago. I'm um, I'm leading that. And uh, so, but anyway, all right, this is all bragging and ego. Um, well, you get a, you know, this is a good spot for, it's a good spot for the bragging ego a little bit. You know, you get your, get to say your spiel and all that. Feel like, what's this platform for? Well, for a bunch of things, but bragging ego, it's got a spot too. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. But it's, it's also, you know, I think Jungle Man, for someone like me who's battled ego their whole life, the cycles get less and less, less and less. So, you know, one weekend where, uh, one weekend where I host an event for Tiger Woods and then Michael Jordan ran 50 yards to catch up with me. And then the next day, uh, someone emailed me when Obama was president and said, hey, Obama was asking how you're doing at the World Series. And I'm like, woohoo! And I walked around with my head up my ass for three weeks. I think I was on World Series of Poker Caches. And all I could think of, all I wanted to do was tell everybody this, Michael Jordan and Tiger and Obama. All I wanted to do was tell everybody these stories. And, and you know, so ego was very destructive in that moment for me. And then the cycle gets less and less, right? Maybe that was 2000. I don't know when, but, you know, the cycle gets less and less. You get kind of high. So I'm coming off the seven final tables. I'm coming off a weekend in Miami where I'm staying in this $110 million house. You know, I'm on the yacht with Eric Schmidt, who started Google and, you know, having drinks and just like all of these crazy billionaires, you know, and all of these, we're hosting our own events down there. And so, yeah, the ego's a little bit big. And so now I'm really, so then it's a matter of, all right, you work on it. Results are big too. Results are big too. 
in, in my yeah, it's Saturday. In, Saturday, I'm on the I'm at the Warriors game with the owners. You know, sitting courtside, we're in the back eating sushi, and you know, then we're going to dinner with the coach. And so it's kind of it's kind of this crazy life. And you just you just try to you just try to make sure that you don't talk about yourself too much, which I'm going to do on a podcast. Fine. But well, you should do on a podcast. Podcast is about you. So there you go. Perfect. That's fine. But, it, but in society, then you want to be able to ask people how they're doing and pay attention. And actually, it, it sounds like my ego's out of control, but it's somehow it, it's not too bad. But uh, anyway. I think anytime a young up and coming player with their Sims and their math and whatever talks some kind of crap about you, you should say, Obama asked me how my tournament was doing. That, that should be your response. There's not much to come back to after that. I